Hey there, it's John from Excel Campus, and in this video, I'm going to share best practices for naming your files. So this is a great question submitted by Joe, a member of our Elevate Excel training program, and he wants to know how to name his source data files that he's combining with Power Query. So these techniques will work great if you have a lot of files that are of the same structure, maybe like budget files for different departments or exports of data for different dates. And we're going to look at some techniques and best practices, but I will say that this is a highly subjective matter. So if you have different ways of doing this, feel free to leave a comment below this video. We'd love to learn from everyone. So uh, first of all, when we're naming files, when we're naming data files, I really feel that there's two major components here. We have the description and then the date. And these can be in different order. So I have some examples here where we have a description of the file, then the date at the end, or a date, then the description. And I'll explain why we'd have those in different orders and how we can use that for sorting. I should also mention that we're working with Excel files here, but you can use this for any file type, CSV files, PDFs, PowerPoint files, uh, whatever it is. These techniques will work for any file. So of these two components, we'll first take a look at the description. And there's typically a hierarchy with this description. So the first part of this will be the whatever the file contents are, maybe it's budget files, uh, data files, sales, exports, whatever your data is. And then we'll work our way down the hierarchy. So if we have different files with different data in it, but it's the same structure, maybe you have a file for specific divisions and then departments within those divisions. So I have some examples here for budget files. Budget files could look like this, where we first start with the file contents, kind of what describes what's in the file, 2021 budget, dash APAC, dash marketing, uh, dash APAC, dash sales, and then dash EMEA, dash marketing, dash EMEA, dash sales. So that helps put the files in order, in a structure. And we'll jump over to File Explorer to see how that works. So I'll navigate to a folder here where we have some files with this similar naming convention. And we can see that when we name the files like this, we're able to sort them again in order. So we can hit the sort button here to sort in ascending or descending order, or just click the header here in the name column and that will apply the sort. And it's very easy to see these files, especially if you have hundreds of files here, you can easily sort these. Again, they'll all have to start with the same file contents there. Then they'll have some kind of division or region and then department within that, or however you want to create this structure. But again, this keeps them organized within the folder. So the other part of this, the other component is the date. And this can be a little bit trickier. So typically with the date, if we're just looking at the date by itself, I like to use this format, which is year, month, day. And you can see here that I have four digits for the year, two digits for the month, and two digits for the day. And here's an example, and that's important uh, when it comes to sorting, that we use all of those digits. Even in this case here, we only have a nine for the month. Instead of doing dash nine, we do dash 09. If we're doing the time, it's uh, similar. So format of hours, minutes, and seconds you can do, or just hours and minutes. And this is great if you're exporting files throughout the day and you wanna order them in the time that they were exported, uh, you can use this as well. And again, here's an example where, again, we use two digits for each of those time periods, hours, uh, minutes, and seconds. And then if we wanna combine the date and time, we can do that uh, with the full format there for the year, month, day, hours, minutes, seconds. And here's an example of that. So we'll jump back over to uh, File Explorer and I have some examples of those as well. So here's an example with a combination of the description first and then the date at the end. And we can see with the order here, when we uh, sort this in ascending order, of course, this is first going to be sorted by that description, the, the first component of the file name, and then we have the date at the end. So these are the two file types are the same right here, but they're ordered based on the date at the end. And then we have another two files that they're the same description, and then uh, the date at the end of those as well. So that keeps those in order that way because uh, the file explorer is going to first sort based on from left to right, essentially, in ascending order here. So it's going to look at the name or description first and then the date. So that's how that works. I'll jump back here. I also have an example of just 
date only. So in this case, the description is the same for all of the files. They're all data export files, but they're uh, based on different months. So here we just have the date at the end and it changes by month. Of course, you can do this by day, by hour, by minute, by second, whatever it is uh, with the timestamp at the end. But again, we have the timestamp at the end here, and that still allows us to put these in chronological order because the description is always the same at the beginning. The first component there is always the same. Another option is just sorting by date. And for this, we put the date at the beginning. So in this case here, if we look at these files, they're in order based on date, and then we have the description at the end of that. So the, it's going to sort by date and then description. These descriptions repeat. So these first three files here have the same descriptions as the next three files, but they're ordered based on date. So if the date's more important to you in the organization of your files, you can put the date first to retain that order and group by date and then have the description component second. So, and then finally, we also have an option for just the timestamps. I wanted to show that as well. With the timestamps here, I, again, I have these at the end with hours, minutes, and seconds. And we can see that these files are the same. And this case here goes all the way down to sorting by the seconds, 15, 30, and 44 seconds of that minute. You can put dashes between hours, minutes, and seconds. That's another personal preference thing. Historically, I've never done that, but you can do that to make it easier to read this number here as well. But that's all that is, is hours, minutes, and seconds. So that's a few best practices for naming your files. Like I said at the beginning of this video, this is a highly subjective matter. So if you have different ways of going about this, feel free to leave a comment right below this video. I do recommend that you and your organization adopt some guidelines and rules for naming your files. And that'll just make it easier when you're working with files that other people have created and organizing files together. And I'll make this PowerPoint that I used throughout the video available for free download. So you can create a standard operating procedure or use this as a basis for that. And I'll put a link to that in the description below this video as well. I hope this has helped you. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.